How's it going everybody? Austin Carter here with Attack Line Leather. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. Today I'm doing a, uh, it's going to be a longer video going over Cactus Practice 2.0. If you've been a follower of mine for any amount of time, I do have a Tooling Tuesday uh, Cactus Practice where I show you how I draw and tool cactus. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, you'll know that I uh, incorporate cactus quite a bit in my artwork. I am from Texas. It's kind of what we have a lot of around here um, and it's something I enjoy drawing and incorporating into my tooling. Um, so I'm going to go through this video and kind of narrate um, my process and um, also try and incorporate some uh, just everyday leather um, information um, the tools that I use, the materials that I use, and um, hopefully um, y'all learn something from it. Um, so as you notice, I have begun drawing out my cactus. I am using a scrap piece of Herman Oak uh, 9 to 10 ounce uh, vegetable tanned leather, and I'm using an 8B pencil. Uh, this pencil uh, draws on leather really well. It doesn't leave um, a lot of lead and is easily erased if you need to. Um, so as you notice I used a, a circle pattern. I purchased that from Hobby Lobby. Um, there's many different sizes and I laid down my circle right in the middle and then uh, started drawing out my cactus. Um, I also just to keep it a little more interesting decided to add in some floral and so if you follow along you can kind of see um, just a rough layout of how I go about doing that. Um, it is sped up a bit just because the video would be probably 40 minutes long if I didn't do so. Um, so as you see I'm just kind of following that circle around laying out my vine work. Again this isn't a video um, specifically about vine, uh, vine work or floral layouts or anything like that. Um, however I just uh, did want to I wanted to try something different other than um, just focusing in on the cactus. Uh, if you hear little whimpers here and there, I do have my daughter next to me. Um, I watch her when my wife's at work, and so if you're wondering what that is, it is probably her chiming in. I've, I've received plenty of uh, questions about where I purchased my leather. Um, initially when I started out I got all of my leather from Tandy, Tandy Leather. Um, I used to live in Corpus Christi and they have a local Tandy Leather but since then I have moved um, away from there and um, have resorted to buy, purchasing all my leather online and so I have been purchasing all my Herman Oak leather from Springfield Leather Company online. Uh, they're extremely helpful. They always send me um, extremely high quality pieces of leather um, and they offer uh, an assortment of sizes you can either buy them by the side or you can buy them by the square feet uh, by the square foot and um, they have been extremely helpful if I have any questions or anything like that but that's that's where I purchased my leather from mm -hmm. and so as you see here I am now at the um, the cutting stage of the video. I'm using a Craft Tool Pro um, half inch barrel swivel knife with a yeah uh, with a quarter inch straight blade. One reason I really like tooling out cactus is it 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 gives you a lot of practice with your curves. And then if you uh, practice drawing out vine work around it, um, it, it really gives you some great swivel knife practice. And it, it helps you get that fluid motion that you're looking for.
now that I've cut everything out, um, you can go back over with an eraser and you can kind of erase um, any leftover um, pencil marks that you have made. That's the, that's the great thing again of the 8B pencil is it, it doesn't really leave down a whole lot of lead. And um, as long as you're not pressing down too hard and making any indentions in your leather, uh, you can easily erase any mistakes or anything like that. And then again, once this is all tooled and if you decide to paint it or dye it, um, it'll remove even more of the lead. And as always, uh, always be sure to tape the backs of your project, even though I am using eight, uh, 9 to 10 ounce leather, just always get in the habit of taping the backs. And what this does is it, um, it, it keeps the leather from expanding, but then also it allows you for um, deeper cuts and also uh, deep, deeper bevels and stamps um, when you start tooling. And I'm here, here I'm using one of my favorite bevelers. This is a Craft Tool Pro uh, that I purchased from Tandy Leather. It's, a, it's about a medium size, size checkered beveler and pretty much gets, <laughs> and pretty much gets uh, most of the jobs done that I have. So generally what I do on my cactus is I start on one side and I kind of work my way around and then I just slowly rotate my project uh, beveling each side. From here, I'm going to finish beveling the vine work. Um, again, um, this isn't necessarily a vine work video, um, but again, if you follow along um, and decide to do, uh, again, if you decide to follow along, um, this is a great way to practice practice your beveling and your swivel knife work and your um, your shading and all that stuff. And again, uh, you know, another quick tip is if you're if you're starting a, a project and say you you know you start in the morning, this is a great way to warm up. You know, this this really doesn't take a whole lot of time, and you don't even have to get as intricate as this. But um, if you just draw a few cactus and maybe a little bit of vine work, you know, it'll warm up your hands, kind of get the blood flowing, and um, it it'll just it allows you not to start cold on maybe a project that is an order, you know, where someone spent some money on it. Um, you can you can kind of warm yourself up and um, not start cold. You'll notice that um, I use I use the beveler on a lot of curves, and what I do is I'm just rotating with my thumb, index, and middle finger, and I'm and I'm causing some rotation. And that really rounds out the uh, the curves. Um, if you watch um, some videos with uh, Don Gonzalez, who I have, I, I can attribute a lot of my knowledge to. Um, he uses uh, some different tools for um, creating those uh, curves. He used some, I believe they're under. Uh, I think they're undercuts. And uh, that's how he um, kind of uh, gets that that nice curve um, area in there. I haven't purchased any of those. Um, I believe they're Barry King tools, um, but I found a beveler just works um, well enough. If you want to 
find out how I learned to draw up my own uh, designs. I do have a video um, on my top five favorite Leathercraft books. Um, in in one of the, one of the books that I have mentioned in there is a is a uh, tooling book that I, has really helped me um, transform my work. And uh, what what I found is that over time and over drawing uh, many different uh, art projects that I, I've begun to kind of find my own niche and my own style. And so if you're really looking to move away from using other people's patterns, um, again, there's nothing wrong with that. That's how I started. But if you're looking to kind of uh, branch out and create your own work and um, create your own look, I highly recommend looking up some some books to get the the bases down but then also purchasing a scrapbook or a drawing book with some pencils and erasers and um, just drawing something every day and, that, and that's pretty much what I did was I sit down and draw um, another tip you can do is if you have a scrap bin of leather pick out the oddest shaped scrap leather that you can and try and fill that in with a pattern That'll really help you when it comes to um, drawing on weird, oddly patterned pieces of leather, like maybe um, knife sheaths or spur straps, um, you know, something that's not square or round. Um, that'll really help. And it'll also um, use up some of your scrap leather so you don't have all that laying around and you can turn them into works of art. So here I'm using a, a small thumbprint, and what I'm doing to the lower portion of the cactus is using the smaller end of the thumbprint and angling it up, or angling it down with the bigger side up, and then creating that, it's almost a, a shade at the very base of the cactus. I then flip the project over, the cactus over, and use the thicker part of the thumbprint to um, lay down more shading at the top and I'm not mushing down the very top of the cactus I'm making sure that there is a lip and what this does it kind of gives it more of a three-dimensional look and uh, really makes the cactus pop and using my swivel knife Using almost a flicking motion, I lay down the uh, the thorns for the cactus, and you just kind of put them all over the place, generally like how a, a cactus is. And um, I have the cactus upside down so that as I use that flicking motion, I can keep the uh, the the bases of the um, the the thorns thicker, and then they uh, shallow out as I flick towards myself. After that's complete, I use that thumb tool to um, shade the vine work. And again, um, this is just all about rotation and practice. You'll notice that using my thumb, index finger, and middle finger, I'm rotating the tool as I'm tapping, and then uh, tapping harder in the beginning, and then slowly letting off, creating that nice transition shade that you see. After shading, I move to the background. Here I'm using a Five hole background uh, bar bar grounder. It's the A two zero one two, and what I try to do is um, tap as little as possible in the background. You're, you're not looking for kind of a 
uh, a mushy look. You want um, each tap to be its own stamp and then you want to just work it around in the background um, as few times as possible and that uh, for me seems to get the best look. After that's complete, I use kind of a, a textured backgrounder. It's, it's by Craft Tool, and it's the uh, it's the Craft Tool M882. I also purchased from Tandy Leather. And what I'm doing here is just going to add a little bit of texture around the perimeter of the the tool piece. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm stamping and rotating every stamp so that you don't get the same identical imprint as the previous one you did. And um, as you're going around the, the edges, you're kind of angling the stamp so that it fits in that cut. Um, that way you're not stamping down on your work. And after that's complete, I take my swivel knife and start adding in my decorative cuts. There's a number way there's a number of ways that you can do your decorative cuts and everybody's different and that and that to me is is pretty cool. It, it can add uniqueness to the work. And um, if you follow any of the the great leather crafters, um, generally by the way they lay out their vine work and also do their decorative cuts, it really sets them apart from their competition and other leather crafters. And so what I'm basically doing here is just using sweeping motions and kind of following the, uh, the lines. Um, one of the goals that you're trying to accomplish is to never um, cut or bevel a straight line, um, especially when you're having something flow like this pattern. Um, you want everything to kind of um, just follow along in a nice easy flow. Here I'm just kind of doing a cross hash, hatch checkered pattern on a little vine. And if, uh, if I chose to dye and paint this and then antique it, all these lines would, would pop. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video because it'd be just too long. But I do have plenty of other videos where I show how I paint, dye, and antique projects. So this is it. That's the... Uh, Cactus Practice 2.0. I really appreciate you following along and watching the video. If you haven't subscribed already, I encourage you to do so and hit that notification bell. If you like this video, go ahead and like and share it. And until the next one, y'all have a great day.